I think we are on to something that will lead to a much brighter future. A revolution, actually, um, a world-changing revolution. Everything we do, we do to meet human needs. Not just the survival needs of food, air, water, shelter, but also other needs like cooperation, community, connection. Sociocracy is an approach to governing ourselves so that we can maximize our effectiveness in meeting the needs of all. People are starting to look for ways of governing ourselves in ways that match our values, in ways that are inclusive of all the voices rather than of some while others lose. We wanted to find a way to teach sociocracy that was teaching by doing, teaching by living the process, by, by practicing sociocracy as we did it, rather than simply doing lectures. And what was interesting uh, about doing that is that rather than us finding people, people found us. We wanted people to actually live the experience of sociocracy, to be making decisions about something that was real uh, and not simply simulated. And that was the idea of the sociocracy leadership training, that people would actually meet in groups that had a productive purpose. We had no idea whether this would work, so this was an experiment. Salt is starting tomorrow. Yes, excited, uh, nervous, curious, I wonder what this will produce, whether it's going to be useful. You know, I've done workshops with Jerry, I've, I've seen clients of mine use it in action, but I've never really, I think, fully understood it till really being in the circle and actually doing things. I have seen in flesh something I, I just have been reading about. Just having the space to be able to practice sociocracy, it's something that I've been longing for and needing. What does it feel like to work in a sociocratic organization? You're working together with other people where you know your voice matters and their voice matters. So that, for me, allows uh, just a greater sense of connection with the others, a sense of companionship in our shared work, a sense of as we understand each other and what's important to us as we face making decisions that uh, we can flow. We're in common purpose with each other. Leading the, the meetings with so much more energy than I came with. Can't believe it. It looks like we actually finished doing all the things we were supposed to do. Well, this is the beauty of sociocracy. Can you imagine doing all that we just managed to do without it? I can't. The good thing about an immersion program is that you have your trainers right there and they can tell you what you could do better next time. So you actually get to focus on process, and that's what we were trying to do in SALT. The, having an additional meeting, I probably would have put into the body of the agenda. Um, yeah. But other than that, I thought this was very productive. Uh, you were all working well together, and yes, I echo. I also just go for consent and, okay. and ask anybody who's got an amendment or, or is not yet fully ready to consent to just say what that is. Okay, great. So I'll do that. I'll do a consent round, and if you have an amendment, it's the experience of working together in a way that really gives you that feedback of, of being, work, of, of flow, of being together working on something, where you have that sense of reward from being effective at what you're doing. In this course, we taught uh, the, what we think of as the three basic principles of sociocracy. Uh, decisions by consent, organizational structure, uh, where people are in teams that we call circles, and where there is feedback loops uh, so that the organization is a continuing learning organization. So SALT was not only about talking, but it was also about doing things. So we tried to give people something to do that was actually meaningful and actually supporting the cause. All of those circles that we had were doing work that was actually giving back to the community by creating content that will make it easier for other people to learn about sociocracy and to actually implement it in their own organizations. So, so we had case study circle that we was documenting existing sociocratic organizations so it would be easier you know, for other organizations from, in a similar sector to do the same. We're looking for a range of different types of organizations. It's been cool.
learning a, a bunch of nice stuff about other organizations. Event Circle was promoting sociocracy and explaining and teaching, educating people in an event that they put on. Good picture forming to solidify things into. And we had frequently asked question circle, FAQ circle, that was identifying questions that were asked most frequently, providing answers so people could learn about it and come to a deeper understanding of sociocracy. And then they go to the editors. So a researcher is responsible for identifying the different sources of information to the FAQs. So in order to do their work, circles had to make decisions on how they do their work. So we had them go through picture forming, proposal shaping, and consent decision making with all the steps involved um, a few times so they could make decisions on how they're going to do, how they're going to accomplish what they want to do. But really the proposal basically falls out of what you're doing before. I'm really excited to get better at the picture forming than proposal shaping part. Uh, yeah, this has really helped me refine my understanding of the proposal forming process, and I really appreciate going through this. Clarifying questions round. So I'm going to call out your name, and you can ask any questions that can help you understand this proposal better. And the Let's go to the reaction round. I would do a round to see if we have consent for this proposal. No objections. Uh, I, I have no objections. No objections. Consent. Consent. Yay, we consented to the proposal. <laughs> As people learn the sociocratic process and get comfortable with it, uh, they just start enjoying working together and enjoying being productive. Those are two things that are often missing in our work, you know, and actually enjoying working together. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> if there are objections, then we can look and see whether we want to deal with them. Bring it up now. Come on, Pierre. Let's go. Come on, Pierre. Be brave. Be brave. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay, Pierre. What, what's the objection? Go for it. I'm really proud that people in SALT got to experience what it's like when an objection is not a roadblock, but something that actually makes the proposal better. So we had some great examples of that. Or, okay, so we have two objections. I, I don't think we need to kind of micromanage how each person is going to be doing their tasks. Mm -hmm. But I feel that to do my role, it might be helpful to have access to the documents, links to the documents. The I heard there is an issue about how we choose the 25 question. Yeah, so my objection is if, if we accept the proposal as it, is, as it is right now, we might not be able to move along together. It was fun to see in, in the training program uh, how people got overcame their fear of objecting. Uh, is one frame would be, oh, if I object, then I'm ruining the process. Uh, everything's going to come to a halt. People will be mad at me. What we instead experienced is, no, let's welcome objections because now we're seeing that objections are actually improving the end product. I saw today the power of, of objections because objections were not like obstructions, but always uh, uh, needed uh, clarification. So it was really interesting to, to watch how we always got something better. A core element of sociocracy is rounds. Rounds is very simply each person in the group having their turn to speak. What rounds do that is so essential is that they, they uh, promote or they support the equivalence of everyone's voice. Everyone's voice matters. Everyone gets a turn. Everyone gets listened to, everyone gets a chance to speak. The rounds is probably one of my most favorite things about sociocracy. I do like the fact that everyone gets a chance to be heard. Sociocracy is something you really have to feel. You have to experience what it's like to be part of a group that makes decisions that way. Then it's fun to do. It's not just a, a governance chore. Probably the most unique uh, element of what we teach in the in sociocracy is the selection process. Most of us are used to uh, either voting with our factions for somebody to particular fill a role or doing you know a uh, majority rule of some sort. In the selection process in sociocracy, we're actually saying out loud why we want to nominate someone for a particular role, and that's a level of of vulnerability, of the level of uh, openness uh, that is unusual. Uh, and it can be a little uh, uncomfortable at first and really liberating after you've done it a number of times. 
I guess I want somebody that has some experience. I'd be really happy to share with you what I know. Diana, I think you're a rock star among uh, sociocracy circles. Why is feedback so important in sociocracy? Uh, because it's how we learn. Uh, we need to get a response uh, in, to our actions so that we can then learn to improve, so that we can adapt what we do to be more effective the next time around. Well, without feedback, we're static. With feedback, we're an ongoing, learning, changing, evolving, adapting, resilient organization. Eric, a great job on the facilitation. Uh, you really move things along very nicely. The feedback in sociocracy is, is, is really about what is it that you do that is impacting the rest of us who are working together. But to me, it always gave space for everybody to be who they were and play their roles. It never felt like you took over or dominated other people's space. It also needs the people say, hold on, it's not clear what we mean here, actually. I sense your enjoyment of the process so much more. Continually getting crisper as you, as you went along from the beginning to now. If you really take this in, I'm curious what your response will be, that just how, how much fun and how easy it is to work with you. And it can be hard or, or it's unusual for people to receive that kind of feedback. Uh, I'm a little overwhelmed and uh, appreciative. Well, I, I feel gratitude towards the group. Thank you. So we take another breath. Hmm. And one other piece that we put in there uh, was nonviolent communication. Since the principles of nonviolent communication that say everybody needs matter are so congruent with the principles of sociocracy where we're saying everyone's voice matters. Uh, that's a really um, beautiful connection between those two approaches to support the, the strength of how people work together uh, to be effective in making the changes that we want. My sense is you learned, we've got case studies, you know, we've got that product and we have a sense of community. And so it was not just business, it was, it was human connection. I so depended on you and every single one of you totally stepped up and made it all work. Everyone here is inspirational um, and interacts with people and humanity in a, in a really loving way. And to build our relationships, to talk about ideas. A leader in the real sense, you know, someone who listens. And I really feel like that, like you're, you're this leader who's constantly listening and deeply listening to everyone in the group and trying to get a feel of what's going on. You know, that's how chiefs are picked in uh, Native traditions, is who do the people feel like will be feeling most responsible for the whole group, that it's not about somebody's ego. You are one of the few people I can hear because I feel there is authority and I can feel a very good energy in this. Thank you. What I love about sociocracy is that it embodies uh, what Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. If we treat each other as equals, then we will make policies that support the well-being of us living in this planet. In a world that is shifting towards, uh, towards a new economy or the triple bottom line or the quadruple bottom line of people matter, the workers matter, the consumers matter, the community in which you live and work matters, uh, the, the, the planet that matters, uh, sociocracy can be the operating system for this new economy where everyone's needs are taken into account. That completely distracted me from what I wanted to say. <laughs>